Ultraviolet hit British TV screens on Channel 4 in September and October of 1998. Created by Joe Ahern, this was a fresh take on the vampire fiction at the time, with this show making use of technology and science to explain what the vampires were. Mythology and folklore are pretty much scoffed at during the mini-series of six episodes. The word vampire isn't even used. They are instead called leeches or code fives, derived from the Roman numeral for five, the letter V, which is of course the first letter of the word vampire. Ahern not only created the series, but directed and wrote each of the six installments. The show was a critical success, playing in America on the Sci-Fi Channel. The Fox Network even commissioned a pilot for their own version of the series in 2001, but it never made it to a full series order, with one of the producers stating, we screwed it up and it just didn't come out that well. I will be talking about the show as a whole here, so spoiler warning for those who haven't seen it yet, although you are missing out if you haven't, so go find it on YouTube, watch it, then come back here. The series revolves around the character of Detective Sergeant Michael Colfield, played by Jack Davenport, possibly better known these days as Commodore Norrington from the Pirates of the Caribbean movies. The entire first episode centres on his introduction to the vampire threat right under everyone's noses and yet going unseen. He is introduced to a top secret vampire hunting squad known as Section 5 when his best friend vanishes on the day of his wedding. The squad, which is funded and backed by the government in Britain, and we assume other governments around the world, and the Vatican, use high-tech gadgets to hunt and kill the Code 5 threat. These include carbon-based bullets instead of wooden stakes, and gas grenades filled with concentrated arisin, a compound derived from garlic. The folklore about vampires is built upon in some cases with, for example, a vampire not being able to be seen in a mirror. They have no reflections. In the modern day, they also do not appear on electronic devices, such as CCTV, cameras, videos or photos. The squad used this to pick out the vampire in a crowd by fitting small video cameras to their guns. If the person in front of you isn't showing up on the screen, then fire away. Another complication for Code 5s is that a vampire's voice will not travel down a phone line, so they have to use electronic voice synthesizer computer programs to talk to people on the phone. They use cars with blacked out windows to move around during the day, or sealed metal coffins if needing to take a long flight, as the sun is as deadly to them now as it ever was to Dracula. Also their tissue cannot be seen under a microscope. Any bite marks on their victims can only be found using an ultraviolet light, and so the name of the show. Although some legendary powers, such as being able to turn into a mist or a bat or a wolf, are missing from these vampires list of superpowers, they are stronger and faster than a human. They are immortal and impervious to normal bullets. In a one-on-one -on -one fight, the odds are certainly on the side of the Code 5. However, they can be killed. As mentioned, the squad use up-to-date methods to rid the world of the vampires with carbon bullets and allicin grenades. But that aside, normal wood will still take one out if it pierces them in the right place. When they die, the vampire explodes with enough force to take out a car, blow up a room, or smash the windows of an interview room. All that's left is a pile of rust-coloured dust, which the squad places in a metal container and stores at sub-zero temperature in a locked vault, flooded with ultraviolet light. Why the security measures? Because it is possible to bring a vampire back from the dead, for want of a better word. At the start of the show, the squad have yet to figure out how the Code 5 do this. They just know that they can. The question is only resolved in the final episode, when we see one resurrected from the ashes in a light show of swirling energy 
and subtle screaming wind. The squad itself is led by an ex-priest, Father Pierce Harmon, played to perfection by Philip Quaist, best known for his stage work where he has won three Laurence Olivier awards for performances in musicals. The science division is led by Dr Angela Marsh, played by Susanna Harker, and the military arm of the squad is under the firm control of Vaughan Rice, an ex-army soldier played by Idris Elba, who I am sure we all know went on to bigger and better things. One of the best things about the show is that it doesn't just focus on the vampire threat, or the action, or the toll it takes on the personal lives of the group, but manages an incredibly enticing way to mix them all together. For example, Father Harmon finds out he is suffering from cancer, and the series shows how he starts to doubt his immortal soul and to wonder if he could save himself by becoming a vampire. The Code Fives, of course, start to use this to tempt him. Angela Marsh, although an expert in cancer and haematology, was married to Robert Marsh, a leader in the field and a man the Code Fives convinced to come over to their side. They didn't just take him though, they also took one of Robert and Angela's daughters, causing Angela to carry a deep-seated hatred for the vampires. Before the show begins, Harmon kills Robert and the girl before they can take Angela and her surviving daughter, in doing so recruiting Angela to his team. Vaughn Rice first encountered the vampires during Operation Desert Storm, where they wiped out his unit and he only escaped because by the time they got to him, the sun was coming up. He is haunted by this and hunts Code Fives with a lethal skill and tenacity. He also carries a torch for Angela, but he keeps his feelings for her a secret. Our main protagonist, Michael Caulfield, kills his best friend and partner of ten years, Jack, in the first episode when he drops a grenade he was carrying while fighting Jack in a playground and it blows apart a wooden roundabout. Pieces of the wood impale Jack and he explodes, finally convincing Michael that the vampires are indeed very real. At the end of the episode, he is recruited by the squad. Harmon explains when Michael asks why they would want him, that he has enough soldiers and scientists, but what he needs is investigators. Michael's years as a detective make him invaluable to the squad. Each episode of the series, each given a Latin title, investigates a different angle of vampire influence. The team desperately tries to put the pieces together to uncover what exactly the end goal is for the Code Fives. They find out that they are investigating the manufacture of artificial blood, they are using the stock market to accrue money, and they are attempting to infect large groups of people without the normal method of biting them. Experimenting with artificial insemination to breed a new vampire race, and what exactly is the vampire's interest in global warming? The show does a good job of giving us every possible theory for these uncovered Code 5 enterprises, from a possible idea that they are trying to find a peaceful way to coexist with humanity, to the final reveal at the end of the last episode, where the team realised that seeing the human race destroying the Earth causing global warming, or the possibility of an asteroid strike that could cause a nuclear winter, or even the same winter brought on by warfare, that the Code Fives are actually looking for a way to survive and rule the Earth after that environmental catastrophe happens. Whether they bring about the nuclear winter themselves, where the years of darkness that follow would allow them to roam the Earth without fear of the sun, or whether humanity brings it on by accident. But unlike other vampire shows or movies, Ultraviolet does an incredible job of portraying the vampires as relatable. You actually see their side of the argument and you can almost agree with them. However, realising that the vampires see mankind as simply cattle and might actually bring about the destruction of the human race so they can keep, take control of the earth, the series ends with the squad having a renewed conviction to bring about the downfall of Code Fives before they can do the same to us. Overall, it's an excellently written and acted show, with a few visual effects wonderfully realised. The music is appropriately atmospheric, 
and put to good use in the places that it shows up. What really drives home this series' defining aspect is the toll the knowledge the characters have but must keep secret impacts on their social and emotional lives. Angela Marsh, for example, is getting an antisocial reputation with her daughter's school because she won't let the girl attend out of class activities at night. She also still loves her husband even though he turned into a code 5, making it hard for her to move on. Vaughan has no friends outside of the squad, saying that all of his mates were wiped out by code 5s, but he still visits them in the vault sometimes. Harmon struggles with his religious upbringing and what exactly the vampire's impact on those ideals say about Christianity, with one captured Code 5 stating religions only existed because of them. Michael is haunted by the memory of killing his best friend and also his feelings towards Jack's fiancée, Kirsty, who he tries to keep at arm's length even as she desperately tries to find out what happened to Jack and what exactly Michael is caught up in. Section 5's brutal methods in dealing with vampires, or those helping them, angers Michael until he starts to realise what exactly he is up against, and that he may be out of his league. He wrestles with the thought of leaving the squad, and even hopes his moral issues, his moral issues which cause waves within the Section 5 network, might actually get him thrown out. For its time, Ultraviolet was revolutionary, but the fact the Fox Network couldn't come up with a successful way to make a sequel, and that no one has tried since, shows just how much this show was lightning in a bottle, never to be repeated. A gem of a show that has unfortunately faded into obscurity, but if you can find it, then do yourself a favour and watch it. You won't be disappointed.